Hey guys, it's Lynn Pratt. I just had to sh wanted to share with you a few things to think about when you are drawing out an image. Um, so I've been showing you a couple little tips and stuff about photographing images. Photographing a dark image is very difficult. So an Oreo cookie where you really want to get the highlights and the shadows on all of that pattern in the actual cookie, all of that ups and downs, the relief there, so that you can really get that three-dimensional feeling in your painting, you wanna make sure you have your angled light source. So if you haven't seen them, I've shown a couple videos of how I set up when I take my photographs to get me that really nice shadow to really make everything seem three-dimensional and really capture that three-dimensional feeling of the top of that cookie. So I have my photo, I've edited it, and I'm ready to go with my image. So now what the next thing I have to decide is how I'm going to draw it onto my paper. So I have decided with this image to draw it out by just outlining the separate shapes. Because this is such a complex image on this Oreo cookie, because there's such a difficult pattern to follow, I have decided for this painting to just outline the shapes that are there. And then when I do my painting, I know which way my light source is coming from. So I know which side has highlights and I know which side has shadows. And obviously I also have my reference photo to go by. So when I paint each little area that I have drawn, I'm gonna reference back to each little spot and I'm gonna put my darks and lights where I need to. So again, I decided ahead of time to draw this one out like this. Now, the reason that I would do this, instead of normally if you're drawing something, say you just take one of these little shapes. So how I outlined it when I drew it just goes like this. I just outlined that shape and drew it on my paper. However, normally when I'm drawing something, if this is my shape, Instead of just drawing a shape, what I would actually do is normally I would draw the values. So this is my darker value, that might be a mid value, and this might be a light value, okay? But if I did this instead of this for every one of these shapes, that when I'm going through this painting at this scale, it would be super difficult to follow along if every shape like this was broken up into multiple values. If I was doing this painting at a full size sheet, I would definitely put much more detail into each little area. So instead of just drawing the outline, if this was a full size sheet, and instead of this shape being about this size, it would really be about this size. So I would decide to draw it differently on a full size sheet than I would on this eight by 14. So this is an eight and a half by 11 image of it. I'm gonna paint it at 11, this is 11 by 15 piece of paper. So with my shape being this size, I can easily reference this and see where all those different values are. But if I'm drawing it this large, then I might actually wanna break out where some of those values are so I have something easier to follow at such a large scale. So for instance, where this little area is right here, I have it drawn just as a very simple shape. But if I was going to do it much bigger, and it really was something that was this big, instead of just outlining the outside, I might have it drawn completely differently because this would be the darker shadow this would be another value, and the center would be a different value. So this would be my darkest value. This would be a mid value, and this would be my lightest value. So if I'm drawing it this size, I'm gonna break all those out separate. But if I'm only drawing it this size, it would get very confusing to have all of those separate lines on a painting of this size. So you wanna think about what your image is, how difficult you're going to be able to follow along with it. Meaning how easy is it gonna go from your reference photo to your 
painting while you're painting and really make sure that you're, you know that you're painting this one and you're painting it here. You're painting this one, you're painting it here. Because there's so many of a repetitive nature that if I broke these all up, it would be super confusing. However, if I don't break them up on a much larger painting, it will be a lot harder to put all of this little detail in and these darks and lights and these fine points that you really want in a much larger scale painting. Okay, so a lot of people say, you know, you have a reference photo, you want a really good quality, super detailed, sharp image if you want to paint large. You don't need nearly as good of an image if you're painting a smaller painting because you don't need to put all of that detail in to get the same look on a smaller painting. So keep that in mind when you're choosing an image and also when you're choosing how to draw out your image on your paper, definite drawing and painting size is something you need to think about. The other thing you want to think about is if your reference photo isn't super good, if you have, don't have a crystal clear sharp reference photo, it's going to be very difficult to do a large painting from it. So you really want to keep that in mind when you're taking your photos. Because if you don't have a good enough quality photo, it is really hard to paint it large. So if you're going large, make sure you start with a really good photo and do a much more detailed drawing for a large painting. Whereas if you're doing a small painting, or if you're going to do a large painting, sometimes it's good to do an eight by 10 or even a five by seven, just to test out all of your colors, where your shadows are, and the way that you're going to add that detail and to make sure that it's all gonna work before you try a new subject on a super large piece of paper. So I hope that helps give you some insight to how I go about planning how I'm going to draw my image on my paper when I'm just starting from a reference photo. Because again, depending on the subject, depending on the amount of detail and how I'm going to paint it and the amount of different values that are in one area depends how that final drawing is going to be on my paper. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope this helps when you're looking at or trying to choose a reference photo and then looking at them and deciding what size to paint it and how to draw it out. This full tutorial from beginning to end will also be available in my Patreon online school once I am fully finished with it. So if you'd like to paint along with Oreos, that should hopefully be up sometime before next week. So thanks so much for joining me. Let's paint.